Uh, Minister, my question is around what your department is doing to inform all public bodies of their immediate, ob immediate obligations under the UNCRPD to prioritise disabled persons organisations in all consultations affecting disabled people. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Deputy, for this question. The, uh, the UNCRPD requires states to actively involve people with disabilities and their representative organisations in the developing and monitoring of law and policy, and this includes organisations of people with disabilities, also known as disabled persons organisations or DPOs. And these are organisations that are led and have a majority membership of people with a disability. While my department funds and supports a number of structures in relation to consultation obligations, Engaging with people with disabilities and their representative organisations is a responsibility that all government departments and agencies share. The recent uh, Participation Matters report that was published by the National Disability Authority provides important and timely, timely guidance across government to ensure that disabled people are meaningfully engaged in public decision making. Consultation and participation obligations are something I am particularly cognizant of as Minister, and I have sought to embed those core principles of the Convention in my own department's legislative programme. So the Assisted Decision Making Capacity Amendment Act of 2022 advances a number of key measures for further UNCRPD compliance, including providing for consultation between the Director of the DSS and persons with disabilities, including their representative organisations, in the development of a code of practice. In addition, the, disabled, uh, the, sorry, the Disability Participation and Consultation Network, or DBCN, was established in late 2020 with funding from my department to act as a standing consultation mechanism through which people with disabilities, including DPOs and the wider disability community, could be engaged in consultative processes across government. Many departments have since engaged with the DPCN. Uh, a review of the DPCN model has been conducted by the NDA with a view to identifying any improvements that may need to be made to it. Furthermore, a number of DPOs are represented on the Disability Stakeholder Group, which is now in its sixth iteration, and the DSG has been involved most recently in monitoring the implementation of the National Disability Inclusion Strategy, and in that capacity, members of the DSG participate in the Disability Consultative Committees of a range of government departments. Thanks for that, Minister. That was quite comprehensive, and I think, I'm sure you would agree that the UNCRPD was, um, was ratified about five years ago in this. Uh, Parliament, and it was a very, very, um, it's a, a good convention, it's a, right, a rights based uh, convention, and at the heart of it, it is, uh, it has uh, those uh, living with a disability um, at its heart, and I think a continued dialogue um, uh, with that group, with that group of people, in relation to uh, groups that are advocating on their behalf, I think it's very important that they have a, a say and a kind of a, a approach that is right, a rights-based approach, um, and service providers um, that do great work in relation to uh, those that are advocating those with disability. I think there should be a more kind of um, intervention in relation to uh, DPOs. Uh, I think at the moment there's only a, a number of organisations in the state that are DPO-led, uh, and that is, I think that's our kilter in relation to the, the, the concept and the, the, the convention's kind of uh, aspiration. Thanks, uh, th thanks very much. And look, I think I think that dialogue is uh, is, is particularly important. And even in in my, in my own constituency, we have an excellent organisation. It's it's both kind of service provider and DPO, Blanchetown Centre for Independent Living. And you're probably there's a network around the country. But I've always found them a great sounding board in terms of being able to meet with them, talk with people with disabilities, and have a, a, an engagement in terms of legislative or, or policies I'm, I'm working on in in my uh, in, in my own department. I think in terms of of how we're doing as a country in terms of DPOs. Obviously, Ireland has to report to the overse UN overseeing body for the UNCRPD, and we will be, we have submitted our first report. Actually, now it's quite a long delay because of COVID in terms of countries being brought in to Geneva to, to be accountable to their particular report. I've actually gone through two of those reports for the Human Rights uh, Convention and also the, U the, the Convention of the Rights of the Child, and they were really useful in terms of getting feedback from the United <laughs> Nation to experts in how Ireland was responding to those two conventions. So I hope maybe before the end of my term that we'll get that opportunity to be reviewed in terms of our compliance with the UNCRPD, including on DPOs. Thanks, Thanks Minister. Again, quite comprehensive. Um, 
I just want to get your thoughts in relation to the ratification of the optional protocol and when the UNCRPD was ratified a number of years ago, I think this was, um, it was omitted and I think it was a big mistake for many groups, uh, including uh, those that are advocating for those that are with a disability, have said that this is a big mistake by the government in relation to uh, omitting that. And I just wonder, in your tenure, do you have plans to uh, ratify, ratify the optional protocol? Minister to go. Yeah, thanks, Deputy. It's, it's certainly a, a goal of myself and Minister Rabbit that we would see a ratification of the optional protocol. Um, Ireland has a tradition in terms of sorry, well, a, a legal position that it doesn't sign up to conventions that it feels its domestic law isn't ready to comply with yet. And one of the big blockages to signing uh, the, the optional protocol, ratifying the optional protocol, was the, that wardship was still in place. As you know, we've recently passed the, uh, the Assisted Decision Making Act and we'll be taking steps to, uh, to remove wardship and establish the DSS in the very near future. Um, the Attorney General is currently looking at are there any other legislative um, issues that need to be addressed prior to ratification. So I'm looking forward, hopefully, to getting that report from the Attorney General soon. But as I say, it is uh, certainly the goal of myself and Minister Rabbit that we want to see the optional protocol uh, uh, ratified. But I, I, I can't give you a, a clear, I suppose, timeline just, just today.